in a single longitudinal mode laser ok. So, you have only one mode that is supported by uh, the laser. What decides the spectral width of this laser ok. Um, it is not that it is going to be a delta function. Of course, the phase condition gave us only certain allowed frequencies. It did not say much about how much is the spread. So, this phase condition gave us only the values of the nu m, but we would like to know what is this uh, delta nu or we would like to know what is the full width at half maximum of a Fabry-Perot mode. Okay. So, for that let us get back to our uh, electromagnetics um, again and let us say uh, under stable condition. So, what is the motivation now? The motivation is to uh, find the spectral width which is essentially telling you what is the spectral width of a uh, uh, output of a laser. Okay. Spectral width of a mode in a Fabry-Perot cavity. Okay. So, under steady state what is the field that is supported by? So, we are going to now brute force calculate what is the total intensity at the output of the uh, laser. So, under steady state we want to know what is the total electric field that is supported in the laser. A fraction of that is what is available at the output. Okay. So, you have the mirrors you have uh, A naught, it undergoes one reflection reaches here, then again it undergoes the next reflection reaches here, it undergoes third reflection and reaches here and this process continues. Okay. So, under steady state the total electric field in the cavity is nothing but uh, A naught plus so let me call this as e total a naught plus a naught times um, let us say this is r 1 and this is r 2 the reflectances. So, you have square root r 1 r 2 uh, and let us now consider a cold cavity. Cold cavity is the one where there is no gain in the system because what we are trying to find is the spectral width of a mode of an FP cavity the medium should not play a lot of role. So, we are just ignoring the medium for now. So, a naught r 1 uh, square root r 1 r 2 and e power minus j uh, 2 beta d which is the phase uh, plus uh, so, so that is the field here and this field undergoes one more round trip. So, this undergoes uh, square root r 1 r 2 experiences root r 1 r 2 e power minus j uh, 2 beta d once again. So, this term has to get multiplied by the same term which is square root r 1 r 2 e power minus j 2 beta d once again and so on. Right. This happens in finite time. So, for uh, ease of uh, understanding let us call h as equal to root of r 1 r 2 e power minus j 2 beta d. So, I am going to write my e total as uh, a naught plus a naught h plus a naught h square plus etcetera. This is an infinite series and I can write the sum of this infinite series as uh, this is 1 plus h plus h square plus etcetera and this is nothing but a naught divided by 1 minus h. Okay. So, the total field is a naught by 1 minus h where my h is square root r 1 r 2 e power minus j beta uh, 2 d. If there is a gain medium uh, what would happen is instead of this r 1 r 2 you have square root r 1 r 2 e power uh, g minus alpha times 2 d right and uh, you have e power minus b j beta 2 d that is only difference. Uh, let us call this as uh, this is in general a complex number. So, let us call this as e power j phi right r e power minus j phi where r is equal to root of r 1 r 2 e power g minus alpha times 2 d in uh, uh, gain medium, but otherwise it is just uh, root of r 1 r 2 and phi is equal to beta times 2 d 
and this beta is nothing but 2 pi uh, times nu divided by c times 2 d and we know that c by 2 d uh, is our um, f s r. So, this is 2 pi nu divided by nu f s r okay, because these are the allowed frequencies of the system. Uh, so, my total intensity is going to be mod square of this field. So, this is a naught square divided by uh, h is a complex number. So, you have uh, 1 minus uh, r e power minus j phi multiplied by 1 minus r e power plus j phi. And if I expand this complex number, this would be 1 minus uh, r square minus r times e power uh, j phi plus e power minus uh, e power minus j phi plus e power minus plus j phi. So, this is nothing but a naught square divided by 1 minus uh, r square minus uh, 2 r cos phi and I could write this as a naught square divided by if I write it as 1 minus r the whole square. I need to have a uh, minus uh, 2 r. So, I fix a plus 2 r here minus 2 r cos phi. So, this is nothing but a naught square divided by 1 minus r the whole square plus 2 r times 1 minus cos phi which is a naught square divided by 1 minus r the whole square plus 4 r sin square phi by 2. So, let me rewrite this again my total intensity is equal to a naught square divided by 1 minus r the whole square plus 4 r sin square phi by 2 where phi phi is 2 pi nu divided by nu f. This is the total intensity. So, at nu equal to nu f you will have uh, phi is equal to uh, 2 pi and in which case phi by 2 is equal to pi. So, the sin phi term uh, disappears. So, you have the maximum intensity whenever you have the frequency supported by the system would be a naught square uh, 1 minus r the whole square. Let me call this a naught square as i naught, i naught divided by 1 minus r the whole square. And the minimum intensity would correspond to a condition when uh, you have uh, i min is equal to i naught divided by 1 plus r uh, the whole square. Uh, so, that basically decides your maximum and minimum intensity and of course, the frequencies at which the maximum and minimum intensity happens is uh, different. Now, uh, if I look at let us say, so, so it is like this. So, I have set certain frequencies that are supported by the system and I want to know the width. So, I know that um, at m times uh, nu f, you will have uh, the allowed frequency. So, you have i max and this is my i uh, min and what we want to know is the full width at half maximum of the supported modes. So, the objective is to find the full width at uh, half maximum. So, I have i is i naught divided by 1 minus r the whole square plus 4 r sin square uh, phi by 2 and uh, i out the well i is equal to i max divided by 2 that is when you have half the maximum. Uh, this happens when uh, 1 minus. Uh, so, I, I could actually write this as i naught divided by 1 minus r the whole square times 1 plus 4 r divided by uh, 1 minus r the whole square sin square uh, phi by 2 and this part I identify that this is already i max. So, i becomes i max divided by 2 when your 1 plus 4 r divided by 1 minus r the whole square sin square phi by 2 that becomes uh, when this number is equal to 2 that is when the uh, intensity becomes i max by 2. Remember we are calculating the intensity at the uh, inside the cavity 
but what happens outside the cavity is only a fraction of what is happening the inside the cavity. So, uh, what we are working out is reflective of what is happening uh, outside the cavity also. So, this means this is 4 r by 1 minus r the whole square sin square uh, 5 by 2 is equal to 1 and I have sin 5 by 2 is equal to 1 minus r plus minus divided by 2 root r. Now, what is this phi? This phi is actually we uh, worked out that this phi is nothing but uh, 2 pi nu by delta f. So, this is sin pi nu divided by uh, nu f not delta f pi nu divided by uh, nu f is equal to plus minus 1 minus r divided by 2 root r. So, what we are saying is you have corresponding to this uh, allowed frequencies you have a maximum intensity at some other frequency uh, corresponding to this uh, allowed frequencies uh, uh, you know nu m minus 1 to nu m this spacing is your nu f uh, you have the minimum intensity and what we are trying to say is that uh, the full width at half maximum is given by the condition or it is it is uh, happens at a frequency nu which is given by this condition okay and the minimum intensity of course we know the maximum intensity is uh, 1 i naught divided by 1 minus r the whole square and the minimum intensity is i max divided by i uh, i naught divided by 1 my 1 plus r the whole square so uh, for an ideal case if the mirror is 100 percent reflecting your r is uh, root of r 1 r 2 that is 1 and if r is 1 if r is equal to 1 your i max is actually infinite you have infinite uh, intensity that is of course not uh, reality. So, the point is we want to now calculate what are the exact uh, frequencies at which this condition is satisfied. So, that frequency is what we have marked here this is nu and we want to know what is this uh, width. So, uh, that is obtained by inverting this uh, equation uh, depending on your r your uh, sin inverse of uh, uh, 1 minus r by 2 root r will give you pi nu by nu f and from that you can calculate. But we could make an approximation and say that look if my cavity has its reflection coefficient uh, large enough or in other words uh, other way of physically interpreting this is that if the uh, modes are extremely narrow it means that your nu by nu f nu by nu f if nu is not very far away nu is the frequency at which the power drops to uh, half of it if that is not very far away from nu f you can approximate that this nu is uh, almost equal to nu f and if nu is almost equal to nu f your uh, it is close to saying it is sign of close to pi and that is close to uh, and in that approximation I can say that this number is almost equal to pi nu divided by nu f ok that is equal to plus minus 1 minus r divided by 2 root r which means your nu is uh, nu f times 1 minus r uh, divided by pi root r 2 pi root r ok. Uh, you could have this happening plus minus which means that you could have uh, on the either side of the maximum. So, your full width at half maximum is actually uh, nu f divided by 2 pi root r 1 minus r times 2. So, let me write this again your full width at half maximum is equal to nu f times uh, 1 minus r uh, divided by pi root r. Okay. So, this is the output of a fabri perot cavity it has specific frequencies that are allowed the spacing between the frequency is nu f the allowed frequencies in the cavity have a certain shape to it and that shape is given by this uh, function the intensity at the output and the full width at half maximum of 
this is given by uh, nu f times pi uh, 1 minus r by pi root r. So, uh, you so there is a commonly used term called finesse that represents the quality of this cavity. Larger is the finesse, sharper is the cavity. So, uh, uh, finesse is a quantity uh, which is defined as uh, nu f divided by uh, full width at half maximum. Smaller full width at half maximum, larger is the uh, finesse. Okay. So, in that sense finesse from uh, by comparing with this full width at half maximum relation, finesse is nothing but pi root r divided by 1 minus r. So, this tells you how selective is your, how frequency selective is your cavity. For example, if your nu f is very small and your full width at half maximum is very large, you cannot basically identify the two modes. It, it will overall be a very broad spectrum that comes out of the cavity. But whereas this finesse information is very important for a single longitudinal mode laser because in an SLM uh, you have picked a specific uh, longitudinal mode, but the width of emission is primarily now decided by the uh, finesse or by the number pi root r divided by 1 minus r and of course r is square root of r1 r2 e power g minus alpha times 2d if there is a gain in the system. Okay. So, this is how a fabri perot cavity is uh, behaving. Now, what we need to do is uh, we need to find out the exact threshold condition of a laser and then also find out what is the stimulated lifetime. So, we stop here. <laughs>